Most of us have one moment in time when we feel like we have made a mistake. I've had several with openly the same individual. Each time I think I'm doing what Lord God wants me to do by staying put and waiting for her to follow, I literally lose, it feels like. And I sort of lose it afterwards because I'm challenged by submitting. It's really difficult in the life of the world to submit something. Now forgive the background music, I'm suffering through a Starbucks, if you will, but even if I say that, it's just the CD I've chosen to play at this moment in time. In life, we have moments of time to make all the difference in the world for people. I literally have paperwork, I have property, I have keys, I have a ring, I have a rock, and I have all this that I have to give to this woman, even some things for her loving children. But it's not something you just do when you pass by one another with carts in a store. I literally just, just felt it. You see, I was led to a particular store yesterday, and it was based on a prayer that I said that was sort of solid. And that prayer was, if this is option number one for me, and real, then allow me to see her face again. And openly, I was led throughout the store, as I often am in life, just like I was led to this place again today through the freezing cold temperatures out store. And I'll tell more about this magic of God and the magic of Lord in a little while. But I literally put myself in God's hands and just followed the pattern. I did the work. I wrote down the potential sponsors. I did all the things I was supposed to do. And then Lord said, okay, I want you to go down this way and I want you to turn right. And I literally did that. And in turning right, I started to come upon a lovely face. And I don't mean it practically the way that everyone thinks. It's the eyes and souls that I long to see. And I just lost my breath. And I said, what do I do, God, in my soul? And the Lord said, walk by. I'm not always a perfect submitter. And I simply said, oh, my love, as I walked by. And I kept walking. It was a little bit later that I had to stop completely because I was shaking so loudly in my soul and I was really coming unglued. You know, I've waited seven years to tell someone something and I'm wanting to do that in an informal, in a, in intimate sort of way. It's not something you holler across somebody in a lane. It's not something you push on someone when they're not ready. And openly I've been told with my gifts that Maybe she just wasn't quite ready or she wanted me to walk by to prove that if I have to let her go in a moment of difficulty, that I will. At some point, lovers have to part one another. When my father was in his late years, he was suffering greatly with a non-hereditary disease called Parkinson's PSP, supernuclear palsy. It was literally taking his physicality, but thankfully not all of his mind. But every single day, the only thing he longed to see was my mom. Now my mom went through her grieving stages that she needed to go through as she watched her husband of more than 40 plus years, 50s I think, and I don't remember, I think it was actually 62, but you know, I'm numerically challenged and I leave that to the one I love, but in terms of mathematical counting. But what I'm talking about is that he longed to see only her every single day during those moments when he was left alone in a room being cared for by total strangers in a place because his insurance literally covered it. Now when I talk about this online, I'm talking from experience of watching my father literally deteriorate. The d disease that took him, I believe, was some sort of a rebuke from the Lord with regard to his early years in life when he wasn't totally in control of his own physical self. And I'll just leave it at that because I've sort of talked on that a little bit in other audio casts, and it's not right for me to disparage my father's name. But openly, when I talk about the frailties of humanity, we all have moments of time when we rage, we all have moments of time when we love, we all have moments of time when we laugh, we cry, we tear, we do it all. And literally, this one, this one only, makes it all worthwhile. The fortune of my life is not always what people think the fortune is of their lives. The fortune of my life might be some items in my storage unit that are really everything in there is one of a kind. They're non-replaceable items. They belong to only one person should my demise occur, and that's the woman I love. But what I'm talking about the fortune of my life is the one who lights me up like a Christmas tree when I'm allowed to see her and literally allowed to talk to her. 
When a man's sort of in a pause about not knowing what to say, he's looking for an indication, a loving notation, a loving invitation to say, hey, hi, how are you? Or something like that. When I talk like this openly, I'm talking about real life because in life, it's our family that we choose after our birth family is long gone with their own children, their own husbands, their own wives, whoever, that are we are left with for our own selves. It's practically what the Bible talks about of two people coming together and departing the family unit and making their own. And in essence, that's what people do. Sometimes the original families that are produced don't make it because we didn't pick the right person, we didn't think about the long-term aspects of our life, and in my father's case, we'd, he didn't really realize that my mom wasn't totally able to do everything she needed to, even her own health of being an independent living soul. She had to have the help because he just was too heavy for her to lift. Now in life, we have moments of time to take care of someone until that point of time when we need additional assistance of youth, feel youth, more youthful people. The value of having children is that they are those strong people in those moments of time. The value of having a lover who loves your soul is that no matter what happens to you physically, no matter what happens to you mentally, no matter what happens to you psychologically, spiritually, and any other way that the Lord may choose, that that one soul will love you all his or her days. And that's the reality, that when we put together a partnership in life, we're looking for the one who says, for rich or for poor, in sickness and in health, and all the other things that we tend to put in those automatic vows or the ones that we personally write for our, for the one we love. In my case, I've invited her now four or five times to be wed. It was too early when I did the original ones, and I'm not even sure she saw the song that I sung, but openly, I'm looking for that now. I'm looking for that response, and I'm looking for that opportunity to just converse about what I feel in my soul and why the Lord may think we're a great pair to go forward in life. We've both been through almost identical types of struggles with difficult relationships and closing them down and finding that it's important to carry on. In my case, I've not wanted anyone other than her since my original partner left, and that's the reality. I can't say any more than that. But if I put this out there, what does it mean for her privacy and mine? It means people are snooping, perhaps, or it means I'm sharing a true story because I want your life to feel the same. I want the person you choose in life to light you up like a Christmas tree, and I literally want all the music of the world to only direct you to that individual. And that's what true love is about. That's what true love is, at least from my point of view. I don't know what it is from your point of view, but I'd love to hear it. Thanks for listening.